Hi and welcome. So in this video, I want to focus on analyzing existing percussion patterns. So in this case, I'm using the main theme of Elden Ring, and I just want to focus on the percussion pattern that is going on in the middle section. Okay, so I imported the main theme into my session here, and the first thing that we have to do is figure out the tempo. So let's have a listen. Okay, so bam, ba, ba, ba. This would be the tempo, and also the signature would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But this is just me and just my personal opinion, but I would always recommend to count as fast as possible, uh, meaning not to count half time. So you can count this like this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But you can also count one, two, three, four, one, two, three. However, I would always recommend to count it full time, not half time, because when you want to put it into the piano roll or when you want to transcribe it on paper, it would eliminate the need of 16th or even 32nd notes or six tuplets and all that stuff. So it may be easier to read or detect on the piano roll. So now let's find out the exact tempo. So I'm using the um, beat calculator here and let's just find out the tempo. So it's kind of like circulating around 153. So this is probably the tempo of the track here. So let's add a tempo track here. And we're just putting it right on top. Just making it 153. Now what we're doing is go on here and try to find the exact starting point. Turning off the grid, just putting it here and Turn on the click and see if it works. Okay, it works. It seems to be in sync. Let's just move it a little bit more on point here because I think we're still... Okay, that should work. So to just really know if you're just close or if you just hit the exact tempo, you can quickly go at the end of the track here and assuming that there is no tempo change happening and just quickly uh, you know, play it from here. So you can hear that the click is still in sync. So this is definitely 153. Okay, so like every good surgeon, I just want to expose the area I'm I'm working on. So let's just focus on these bars here. Okay until here we delete the rest so we can really focus on this spot so the next essential thing we have to do is find out if the beat is binary or ternary and uh, or both so let's check this track again here so you always hear a significant pattern here that is da 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 right da da da, -da. Da, 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 da. So if you just slow it down, da, 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 one and two and three on da, 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 one, two, three, da. So it's tannery, right? So this entire thing, if I would th sing, it would make sense. If I would sing um, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and two and three, it wouldn't make sense. So it just settles in a tannery, uh, as a tannery beat. Da, 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 so you could just come up and, and make up something that is repeating repeating so bam that has nothing to do with the track but you would instantly know that the feeling is right so 
So I set up two instrument tracks and for now this doesn't matter. We just create part by holding down the Alt key and just go into this here. And we switch to, I already did that here, to eighth note triplets. Okay, so now let's analyze this. Okay, so before we analyze the pattern here, let me quickly uh, mention the libraries. I have used Damage 2, um, the uh, Armageddon 2 ensemble here. I reduce the mix, make it a little bit more closed mic'd and the other library I'm using is HCO1 and Simmer Percussion by Spitfire. The low booms, doesn't matter for now, I just loaded the closed and the room mics and you know, we just try to find out the sound later. So now let's get into analyzing this beat here. So now that we've figured out the tempo and that we know that is a tannery beat, let's just expand this here. Uh, let's try to listen to the sound and also see the pattern that is going on here. Okay, so the first thing is we do uh, is doing the most essential stuff, the most basic stuff. We just find out the big hits, right? So we just have... Um... So let's use D and D sharp here and just, um, you know, click these in here. There's another one here. We're using the same note, Does, doesn't, doesn't matter for now. There's always a hit here. So what we do now is get on the next level of detail, not the very fast stuff, but that's just the notes that are a little bit more obvious uh, in between here. So you can hear two on three, four. Right? Just make this full beat. We can, we can do this later. It's just there to just get an idea of what is going on. Let's maybe bring this up to full volume here and let's make these a little bit softer. So there's just one here and we have some kind of a crescendo towards the end. We're going to figure this out later. Um, let's listen. And now it, it's just an easy play to figure out the fast notes. Okay, so now let's focus on the next level of detail. And we already know that it's a tannery beat, so we will have triplets. We don't have 16th notes or 8th uh, notes or something. We have triplets. And the first triplet or this, the first set of triplets is here on one ta ta. Ba, 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 ba. Right? Please don't be confused. It's four beats. Ba, 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 ba. But the last beat is the two. So let's make it like this. Let's bring this down a little bit. Again, we will we will tune that later. So let's make it a little bit uh, this ramp a little bit more like this. So the next one is here. We just you know we just make it completely easy and copy this from here. And now we basically got the full pattern. Except the end, and this is basically also a triple pattern, triplet pattern. So we just use this one, and we just ramp it up a little bit more to make it a little bit more dramatic. So let's listen to this solo. And of course, the last one is missing, which would be the first. So we could. Uh, you know, cycle this, loop this here, and let's listen to this. Okay, that's basically the main pattern. So what we do next is find out if this is just a repetition of the pattern or if there is something else going on towards the other half of the track here. Let's disable the loop and let's listen. I just heard that there is just a tiny little ramp 
going on here. So let's listen to this once again. There is just a tiny little bit, so let's change this. So we have to unsolo this. Unsolo. Okay, so that's the beat. And let's listen to the second half here. So it's basically the same thing. So we just copy that over, oops, glue it together and listen to this again. What I don't want is to have two notes, even though this wouldn't be a problem because it's round robin, I just want to have it also visible or visual that there is a change happening. Okay. okay, so next up, I could be completely wrong about this, but what I know is that you can spice up a track a lot by inserting subtle notes or ghost notes even. So in this case, I just want to have a pulse going on. That is basically, let's use the note C, very subtle, and just put it on, on every quarter note here and just copy it over. So we have this constant pulse going up throughout the track. Uh, let's listen to the track, uh, to the track isolated. So I feel that there is something in the background that's jump, 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 something a little bit marching. Again, I could be wrong, but this is what I kind of like here in the very background and it uh, definitely spices up our track a little bit here. feels about right. So you've probably heard it already, but compared to the ensemble that is going on in the original track here, our arrangement sounds a little bit small. And we just make it a little bit bigger by just adding more drums to this. So yeah, let's use this one here and uh, just reduce it a tiny little bit so it's not that loud. So what else could we use? Let's use this one here too. So that should be okay. And to make it even bigger, and when I say bigger, I mean more broad, more spatial, or more uh, mighty or epic, however you want to call it. And uh, we are going to select all notes except the first one, so they are not disappearing uh, from, from our container or not, you know, getting muted. Um, and we make sure that soft quantize, soft quantize is not ticked. And we're going to introduce some rough quantize, meaning we put a little bit of humanization on this. So let's hit that once. Let's listen to uh, without quantize or without humanization first to this pattern here. Now we just hit quantize with introducing rough quantize, meaning it drifts away like 12 ticks and it sounds like this. Let's undo this again and listen to this again. We'll zoom in a little bit and do it again. Okay, so it sounds a little bit better and a little bit more mighty. Okay, that works for me. So quickly mentioning why did I select just every note except the first ones. Uh, when you're still arranging, it can easily happen that if I just 
do this again here, introducing a rough quantize and just apply it on the first notes. It can happen that some notes will be muted because they are slipping outside of the container. Of course, you can drag along the container here or however you want to call it, the MIDI event or this MIDI container and put it here, but you will have a hard time copying it over to other parts. So I just leave it or like to leave it all like this. Let's undo this again here. And when you're done with the composing and the arranging process and you know where you all parts you want to have, you can go in and select all notes again and, and humanize these. Okay, and to make this arrangement uh, more alive, we introduce another library, another color here. So uh, as I said before, we're using the low booms from the from HZ01 and we are just simply copying over um, the pattern here, just get rid of these, get rid of these here, get rid of these, get rid of these, just get rid of these here. So we just oops, quickly moving this down and making the C sharp go D. We can also, you know, vary this, whatever, you know, put this note up here. It doesn't really matter. So let's listen to how this sounds. Uh, sorry, just copying down an octave. So, as I said before, C and D would be the notes here. So we have to balance this a little bit better. What we can do is uh, simply go in here and reduce it, compress it, and then move it up again. And it sounds like this. Or... Compress it a little bit more. Bring it up again. So we just use this as an additional color. Now let's listen so loud how these both sound together. And I just Change the, the volume a little bit on the second one, so I didn't do that much. Let me just bring that in here. And kind of like matching the volume of these both so that they are good sounding together. And the next thing I'm going to do is select these two and say add group channel to selected tracks. I will just say percussions and we have a group track here. And what I'm doing right now is introducing a little bit of compression. So I've just loaded the virtual mix rack here by Slate. Again, you can use any compressor. Um, it's just a matter of taste and what you, what color you like. So let's listen to this um, custom opto here. And let's change the mix a little bit. Okay, next up, let's listen to the track again here. And it could be due to the mastering, but uh, there is a lot of high frequencies going on on the percussions and also a little bit of a, of a cut on the lower mids. So we just opening a EQ and let's just change the sound according to the main theme here. Okay, so let's listen to the main theme again here. And what we did here. Okay, so I think that sounds pretty good. Okay, now let's listen to the original main theme and our percussions again combined and let's match the volume a little bit and see how this works.
Okay, so please keep in mind that we are comparing an isolated percussion ensemble versus a full master track. So assuming you would have written this full track, you would have take care of all of these processes towards the end when you're done arranging your full track. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you are curious to check out another track that I have written inspired by Elden Ring, please check out this video here. Also, thank you so much for checking out this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section below. Also, I would be really happy if you leave a like for this video because it will help my channel big time. Again, thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.